Cuidado. How'd you get so fucked up? How do you like it at the mill, Fritz? Gotta be better than the mines. It's worse here than at Scallets. There you could disappear without anyone noticing. But here... But why would you want to disappear? Nimoy isn't here. <laughs> no, he's not. But the local foreman is an even bigger ass. <laughs> I'm not sure that's possible. You better believe it. I'd like to pay him back for everything and drown him in the river. Drown him? What's he done to you? It was the uh, first or the second day in. But we had a disagreement and I told him off. And then, all of a sudden, we're fighting and that fucker just throws me in the river. I nearly drowned. But how did you get out? I thought you couldn't swim. I can't. They pulled me out. I was up to my waist in water. I see. Well, I'd be pretty fucking angry too. So you want to pay him back? Exactly. I don't give a shit about anything around here. But that bastard's in need of a good trouncing. What about the others at the mill? Are they awful as well? The mill is an old fool. He believes every word that comes out of Thomas's mouth. It's hopeless. And then there's the miller's daughter. She's a pretty lass, and kind with it. But what can she do? Nothing. Not that it stops Mafia gonna see her. But it's Thomas is the root of the problem. Do you think he's jealous? Is she a sweetheart? He might make puppy dog eyes at her. But most of the time he just struts about like a peacock. I really don't think she's the problem. And what do you want to do about it? Do you think you can come to an agreement? No fucking chance. Matthew hopes so because he likes it here. It's true the work's better than the mines, but the play's worse. So how do you plan on dealing with it? Leaving? Perhaps. But first, I want to give Thomas a proper trouncing. I mean a real thrashing. And you think that will help? 
Maybe. Maybe it'll knock some sense into that fat you head of his. Or he'll be too frightened to mess with me. That might help. So why don't you arrange a fight with him? If we win, he'll leave us alone. Oh, we could... What? We could lure him off someplace far away and then wait for him. Maybe to play dice with Lawrence. He would have to go through the dark woods. Mm. I'll think about it. I still want to ask... I spoke with him briefly, and he doesn't seem so horrible. Then you ought to try working with him. He's a sneaky bastard. And arrogant. You should see how he puffs himself up when he's off to play dice with Lawrence. Who's Lawrence? Another mill hand? Aye, but at the neighbouring mill. They call him the Wren. Damned if I know why. Thomas goes there to play dice with him. See you later. Jesus, what have you been up to? I've heard you don't have it easy here. So you spoke to Fritz then? I bet that wasn't quite how he put it. <laughs> no, not quite. Apart from Thomas's name, the rest was mostly swear words. I can imagine. I've been hearing the same from him all week. The foreman here is a pain in the ass. He's trying either to wear us to the bone or force us to leave. Always forcing you to work, is he? If only. That wouldn't be so awful. But nothing we do is good enough for him. There's always some reason for him to yell at us. I can imagine. You know what it's like. We do too little, and it takes us too long, and what we eat's worth more than the work we've done, and it's no fun listening to that sort of shit day after day. And the miller won't stick up for you. I would have thought all the yelling would drive him mad. Not really. He trusts that loudmouth bastard more than us. He's got us down for a pair of parasites. I see. What's so stupid is the mill really needs us. They haven't had any hands here for quite a while, and the mill needs a lot of fixing. But with them around, we can't even get to work. And you definitely don't... You don't ever provoke him? I've already told you once, he's an arsehole. I'd say there's nothing we can do about it. If he wants to yell at us, he'll yell at us. Have you tried talking with him? What do you think? But that just sets him off. He starts saying we're practically bandits, and what he's going to do about it. That gets Fritz going, and he starts yelling too, and... Hmm. I'd never have guessed he's like that. Well, get a job here as a hand, and you'll soon see. And what does he do during the day? Does he work with you? <laughs> Good one. He keeps his eye on everything, but his hand only touches the saw when the miller shows up, which isn't that surprising. Why? The last time he did anything, he almost took his thumb off with a chisel. I wouldn't put an axe in those paws of his either. So, he's clumsy and arrogant. That's what you said about your last master, that Nimoy. Aye, but at least you could sneak away from old Nimoy for a bit. No chance of that around here. And what do you want to do about it? Just run away? Actually, I'd like to stay here. At least for a bit. I never would have thought I'd like working in a mill. But not with him around. It's unbearable. And there's no one I can complain to. But you could. Me? Do you think they'll listen to me? They did once already, didn't they? They hired us because of you. You could have another word with them. Back then, making promises was enough. Now, it will be worse. You can forget about the miller. It's Thomas you need to convince. The miller takes his opinion seriously. So, will you do it for us? Again? Fine. I'll try and talk to him. <sighs> I'm glad. But try not to get on his wrong side. You won't get anywhere with him then. I'll keep that in mind. See you later. <laughs> I'd be with you. So what do you think about the workers I brought you? If I hadn't put in a good word for them, the miller would have thrown them out by now. I heard them say something else. 
So they're complaining, are they? <laughs> I provide for them, and all they do is slack off. Isn't it the miller who provides for them? He can't manage the work anymore. If it weren't for me, there'd be nothing left standing around here. But you need the help anyway. And they're pretty handy. Maybe. But they're in no danger of overworking themselves. They act like they're too good for the mill. And I saw them eyeing up Jane. Nothing strange about that. She's a pretty girl, and she's of an age to marry. It's not marriage they've got on their minds. They'd have their way with her, then before her belly started to grow, they'd have run for the hills. Look, we can reach an agreement. You need the mill fixed, they need the money. If they have peace to do their work, they'll be able to finish it faster. But... And then they'll take their groschen and leave. The mines will open again, and the faster they get their money, the quicker they'll be gone. But do you really think I can trust them to do it? Will they do their work and leave? And leave Jane alone in the meantime? Of course. They're not interested in the mill. They just need the coin to pay their debts. Once they've got enough, they'll have no reason to stay here. I never thought we could sort it out this way. I've known them for a long time, and you can rely on them when it comes to this. Everybody will be better off. All right. If they keep their part of the bargain, I'll even give them a few extra groschen. But woe be tied them if they don't. You can tell them that. May the Lord watch over you. Why is it taking so long? Greetings, Henry. It took some doing, but I made a deal with him. I'm glad to hear it. So we can stay here? He'll leave us be? He'll leave you alone, but there are conditions. Once you finish your job, you'll vanish from here. But you'll get an extra groschen or two for your troubles. And that's it? I thought... Oh, never mind. Oh, and you're to stop dallying with the miller's daughter. Keep on mucking about with her and you'll muck things up for yourselves. The fucking bastard. He can go fuck himself. He'd better give us enough groschen to make it worth it. But I suppose I should thank you. You may have bought us some peace and quiet, and that's better than nothing. Here's something for your help. God be with you. <coughs> Glad to fucking see you, Henry. I need a helping hand. I'm the bailiff of Privet Slavitz now, and... Bailiff, eh? Good luck, then. Hey, Henry! Hey, I've got... Sorry, Henry, old pal, but I'm up to... God be with you. I 
I'm at your service, Sir Knight. Take care now. God grant you help. How may I help you? See you later.
Can we do something about the price? Hmm. All right, so... Agree? You won't convince me with that. Finally. Yeah. Yeah. If I didn't know you, you'd have given me a fright in that armor. Wouldn't you like to take a stroll somewhere? I'd love to.
Here we are. Thanks for stopping by, Henry. My pleasure. God save you, good night. And what can I do for you? <laughs> Let's talk about the prop. Well. Agree? You won't convince me with that. Ah, oh, that... Let's have a word about the... Well... Satisfied? More. Aye, that would... Let's have a word about the price. Well, we can try it. Agree? That's not enough. My last offer. Come now, just a little more and we have a deal. All right, so.
God be with you, Henry. Greetings, Henry. I hear you on the Rat Eye Tourney. Well done, lad. Sir, we got rid of Zool. <sighs> Finally, some good news. Tell me all about it. We caught up with Hagen in the fields near Merhoyet, and there was a skirmish. It was a tough fight, but in the end, we were victorious. Hagen fell. Good. That's good news, Henry. Any losses on our side? Kuno's men? How did they fare? Some of Kuno's men fell, unfortunately. I'm sorry to hear that. Such is a mercenary's life. May they rest in peace. Anyway, you deserve a reward for your efforts. And thank you, Henry. Once again, I'm beholden to you. I don't know what I'd do without you. Ah, thank you, sir. But I'm sure you'd have managed without me. Don't be so modest, lad. Since that catastrophe at Scalitz, I don't have many people left that I can rely on. Best go and rest now. Thank you, sir. Goodbye.
That all you've got. <laughs>
Greetings, good knight. How may I serve you? I need a skilled swordsmith in Pribislavitz who will put good, strong steel in my men's hands. Are you interested? What? Now? When I'm on the verge of forging the most powerful weapon ever seen, the Queen of Sheba's sword? No, no. I've no time now for anything else. Any chance of some work? Well, come to think, there is one rather delicate matter to attend to. A while ago, a holy man came by here. He said he'd come from the Holy Land, and he was selling various relics he'd collected on his travels to pay his way. I see. Well, I heard he had some fragments of a sacred sword that once belonged to the fabled Czech Queen of Sheba. But by the time he reached me, he had no pieces left of the sword. All he had was some dubious wares, splinters from our Lord's cross, thorns from the crown, nothing of interest to me. And where did the pieces of the sword go? He sold them off to swordsmiths and blacksmiths hereabouts. They just keep them lying around at home for good luck. If I had them, I'd forge them back into a sword. Can you even imagine what power it would command? If you could get me all the pieces of the sword, I'd repay you very handsome. Are you sure the Queen of Sheba's a Czech queen? Who else would she be? Have you not heard of her? Our some priest. She's in the Bible. Uh -huh. Isn't it a bit strange that some pilgrim would have something so valuable? Are you suggesting he might have been lying? Well, people aren't to be trusted, but this is nothing to joke about. God would smite him in a flash if he made light of holy relics that way. What kind of power did this sword have? What do you think? It brought his bearer good luck in combat and protection from enemies. Where can I find the powers? Like I said, the smith hereabouts bought them from him. They say the largest piece is with the Ratai swordsmith. The bastard probably won't want to sell. But if you manage to swipe it somehow... I could do with a sword like that. What if you sold it to me? Well, everything has its price. But this one would be expensive. Getting hold of the bits is one thing. Forging them back together is quite another. That tinkerer from Ratai couldn't manage it. Well, it does sound very interesting. I'll ask them and see what I can do. Excellent. You'll see you won't regret it. I'll pay you well. God grant you health. How may I help you? I'm looking for pieces of a sword that a pilgrim from the Holy Land was selling. Would you happen to know anything about it? Oh, I would. Of course I would. Well? It's a load of tripe. Only a fool would have given that trickster a single groschen, and I'm no fool. How about you? But if he lied about that sort of stuff, it would be a terrible sin. 
<laughs> Don't be so gullible, lad. That bastard never saw the Holy Land. Unless it was in a fresco. Good luck, Ben. It was only a few groschen. No excuses. Hand it over. Here. You got the thrashing you deserved. I hope you've learned your lesson. I'll amend my life from the very foundations, believe me. You really let him go? Just like that? And did you get the loot back? I did. I have it here. Thank you, that thieving magpie. You can't trust anyone these days. Ahem. <clears throat> and just so you know, I'm no pinch purse. Here's a small reward. Thanks. I know you from somewhere. Hmm. Where do I know you from? What? Of course, my dream. You were in a boat made of bone, and I put a crown of thorns on your head. I've heard you know of some irresistibility potion or whatever it is. Ah, oh, naturally! Musk of infinite allure! An age-old recipe, maybe even older. Tested by Moses himself. Moses? Or how do you think he managed to get his people to follow him through the desert for 40 years? It's extremely potent. Yeah, so it would seem. How much do you want for it? Who do you take me for? The wisdom of the ancients isn't something that's bought and sold in the marketplace. Did Jesus charge for his miracles? But since you ask, how about this much? What? That much? You're a crook. As King Solomon said, honesty is for those who can afford it. If you like, I can mix the elixir for you, in exchange for a small favor. But this is a matter that demands experience and knowledge of the philosophical arts that only a few possess. It's not a task I can trust to just anyone. But to your apprentice, you can, right? See, you read my mind. About that recipe? Uh, yes, uh, you want to buy it? Right. Tell me about this dream of yours. That dream? Yes, that dream has come true. 
I dreamt that a young man would become my apprentice, my own pupil in the trade of miracles. And that's supposed to be me. Oh, well. What's your name, young man? <sighs> Henry. Henry. Hmm. A powerful name. So, Henry, are you ready to become my apprentice? First, tell me, who are you and what do you do? me. I am an unworthy, low, and miserable servant of providence. Scholar or merchant, believer or heathen, I wander the world without home or family, with only my wagon offering miracles to those that need them. That's who I am. Without home or kin, I wander this world with my wagon. Providing the miracles that people need. Ointments, relics, aromatic herbs, rare spices, talismans and amulets for luck. All these things I have. One beer for me. What exactly does it entail, becoming your apprentice? No, a lot of work and strenuous labor. Knowledge of medicine, theology, and white magic. You have to study the great works of the ancients and devote your time to understanding your fellow men, listening to them and learn to read their souls. That's a pretty challenging task. That's why God has sent you. That's what he said. <laughs> All right, I'll be your apprentice. Wonderful! Oh, glorious day! I have a successor in my work. So, how do you plan to start training me? With a test of your practical skills. Oh. I have my eye on three rare objects of great value. But sadly, they're a little difficult to test. But just so we're clear, I'm not stealing anything for you. Who said anything about stealing? You said these are valuable things you're after. I don't suppose you can just pick them up anywhere. Valuable for me, because I know their power and strength. For an ordinary mortal, they barely mean anything. Oh. Well, that's fine then. First, I need a tooth of Saint Procopius. Then I'll need a branch from a topping out hung on a church. And finally, a talisman. For luck, I'm a passionate player. Bloody hell, that's a lot. All right, one thing at a time. About that tooth, it's going to be slightly more complicated. I know. Yes, it would be very difficult to gain such a rare relic, of course. That's why I have an alternative solution. I'm listening. A layman named Procopis lives by the monastery. And it just so happens, thanks to my intricate medical knowledge, that I found out he has a sick tooth. How did you find out he has a sore tooth? Uh, as it happens, he told me at the time. But okay. that's not important. And how am I supposed to get the tooth? I haven't the faintest idea. You'll have to think of something. But maybe you'll be able to persuade him to let the blacksmith pull Wouldn't that be swindling people? It is, and it isn't. If I sell that tooth as the tooth of Saint Procopius, then it certainly is deceitful. But if I sell it as a tooth from Procopius of Sasso, then I'm cheating nobody. Does it really matter whose tooth I bring then? Of course it does. The name Procopius in this holy land is shrouded with mystical power. Sometimes I might play a trivial trick on someone, but I assure you, I'm no swindler. Fine. I'll get it from him. Wonderful.
This topping out? What's that? <laughs> You're not a carpenter, it seems. No, I'm a blacksmith. I see. Well, a topping out is a decorated spruce or a conifer tree hung on top of the roof of a new house to bring good fortune and God's blessing. Pull me one. Well, then all we need to do is break off a branch somewhere, buy a few ribbons, and we've got our own homemade topping out right there. You don't understand, young man. The topping out was sanctified by a priest, and it hangs on the highest church far and wide. You can't just replace it with a decorated branch. Fair enough. That topping off is hung pretty high, isn't it? Naturally. It hangs on the rooftop according to tradition. And the church is tall. Right and how here. am I supposed to get it down? Damned if I know. But they had to get it up there somehow, didn't they? Very well. I'll get it. This player's talisman. Where am I supposed to find it? I actually have a specific one in mind. Here at the inn, there's a dice player who always has a cat's paw with him. That's supposed to bring him luck. A cat's paw? I thought players bring along a rabbit's paw for luck. Uh, I thought so too. But this man is winning one game after another, so cats are clearly even more powerful than rabbits. Oh. How am I supposed to get the talisman from him? I haven't a clue. It won't be easy, but I'm sure you'll find a way. <sighs> we'll see. Very well. I'll get you the paw. I'll get looking for those things then. Excellent! You do that, my journeyman. Good luck. <laughs>